Today, I would like to tell you a little story. Ever since I was a child, I found myself in complete awe by different nations and cultures around the world. I was lucky enough to be part of my hometown's dancing ensemble, and thanks to that humble but highly professional group, I first had a glimpse of different cultures and traditions around the globe. For these in this audience, just think about it for a moment. These were the first years we could actually go abroad from the Soviet Union. We were seeing the same faces in our country. And then, how did people look like in other countries? What clothes did they wear? How did families live like? Right now, it seems very easy that we live in such an interconnected world. But back then, it was a completely different story. Traveling to Europe with my dancing ensemble where we were giving concerts was like being a part of an odyssey. And with this came great encounters that I cherish in my heart right now. And I would like to share with you some, some of them. And my experience, I hope, will help you bridge the gaps between different nations. And for those of you who are planning to open uh, new markets for your products, is going to help you understand a bit more people from other countries and think that actually they are, don't seem so far away from us and they, uh, they can have the same needs that we do. One of my early findings was that we, people from different nations, actually are not so different as they think. For example, in my case, they all had passion for dancing. As years went on and I began my professional career, I traveled, studied, and worked in countries that seemed to be very different from each other. One of my first exchanges started in Poland in the university on a student exchange program. Poland is not so far. Have you ever tried Vareniki? Well, in Poland, they have the same dish. It's just called differently, pierogi. So maybe they are also not so different from the way they think as well. Later on, flashback forward a few years later, and I arrived to New Delhi. No paved roads, no meat, monsoon rains, very different from what I had seen before. Living alone in India presented some challenges as a young woman food, as well as a uh, language barrier. All this was not very easy, as you can imagine. But I understood very valuable thing for me, and now it's important in my experience that I had a glimpse of a millionaire civilization there. So after all these adventures, I decided that I had one more place to go. One, one country and one continent that I actually had passion about. Can you guess which one? Well, it was, of course, Latin America. For me, as a dance lover, just think about it. I imagined myself in the carnival, attending this great event. Salsa, samba, bachata, merengue, wow. And finally, I got an internship in Colombia. Well, a tropical country, I was thinking, while my plane was landing and the pilot announced. Th uh, welcome to a sunny, beautiful weather and 10 degrees Celsius in Bogota. What? Sorry? <laughs> really? Yes. Then later on I realized that Bogota is the capital of Colombia and it's located 2,600 uh, meters above the sea level in the Andes Mountains. And actually it's not uh, so hot and it's even called as a fridge among, uh, around the whole, uh, all the, the rest of Colombians. So thanks to that chilly city and its wonderful people, my experience was there there was everything but a waste of time. I launched uh, a business in, tour in tourism industry for the new markets in there, and I worked on several administrative positions as part of my internship program uh, as, a, and as an intern first and later on as a professional. So what, you, what I understood from there, and I can now compare that experience in logistics development and uh, production in Latin America and Eastern Europe, and what I understood is that people are actually not so different from each other. They all have the same needs. 
like food, you know, celebrations, the way of communication, then ca they can vary from country to country, but the needs remain the same. For example, in Colombia, and especially in Spain as well, if we go, go closer to home, people don't like big distances while talking. So if you talk to a person, more than a meter in the southern countries like Latin America and Spain, it's considered rather coldly, you know, that you're cold-minded and not so friendly. There is a different situation in northern countries, for example, in uh, Nordic Europe or in, uh, even in Eastern Europe, the same. Distances between people are much uh, bigger. For example, if the distance is less than a meter, it's considered as a violation of private space. If we go closer to home, to Spain, and talk about celebrations, I actually um, was very uh, surprised when I attended Las Fiestas de Santa Barbara in Spain, and I was flabbergasted by the rituals that they have in there. So there was a musical band parading throughout the city and inviting every bystander. Uh, this was like a little carnival and uh, festival, festival day in there. And among this assemblage was a group of men who, in a playful way, spanked all the spectators and bystanders with the palm tree branches. So, what was going on there? I didn't understand. So, if you go there and once you see a group of men with palm trees, my advice, you better run and hide from them. This, all, this is all part of the experience in there. Now, please raise your hand if you love delicious food. Of course, <laughs> it's understandable. Every nation loves, loves delicious food. I also thought so, and all recipes could uh, actually vary. And of course, the way of preparing food is different from country to country. I remember uh, one Sunday, uh, at my aunt's house in Florida, I arrived there and I was looking for the ingredients for the lunch that I wanted to prepare for the whole family. So guess what my aunt said when she entered the kitchen? Oh my God, honey, what are you doing? It's Sunday, nobody cooks on Sundays, you know? So later on I realized that it's customary in, uh, for example, in Florida, uh, in South America as well, in Colombia, in some towns in Spain, on Sunday, people rest from everyday affairs, they order food uh, home or they take out food from the local cafes or they just go out to the restaurants and spend, ti spend time with their loved ones. If um, all the uh, needs and problems and desires of people of different countries are actually very similar, why do not use it in business? People in Ukraine, is that what, what I think at Ukraine is just an example, have all the possibilities to launch, to create a product or a service that is going to be very interesting for people in Spain and people as, especially uh, even in Latin America. For example, if you take and you want to sell a very simple Ukrainian product, let's say Sala, to Spain, what should you do? Probably you should think of its presentation and the introduction to people, to your target audience, what is going to be more familiar to them. For example, you can name, is, uh, you can name it as Ukrainian sala or Ukrainian hamon, <laughs> right? So what do I do? I work in a company uh, based in Vinica and I establish cooperation with online stores and partners on Spanish-speaking markets. Our company uh, is a cashback service, and what we do, we tell people how to save while buying things online. Who doesn't like to save things, right? All the nation, nation, nations uh, like to save things. So in order for our, uh, for our customers to get along with the product and to fall in love with buying with cashback, we actually talk with them in their languages in every sense of it. For example, we apply the rule uh, of a closer distance on southern country, in southern countries like in Spain, in Latin America that we have recently launched. Um, and we talk to people, we appeal to them in a friendly manner, being loquacious, joking, you know, uh, using a close style of communication. 
There is another personal rule. Uh, there is another rule from my personal experience that I right now use at work that you don't have to talk to a person from the southern country like Italy, Portugal, like Spain, and, and especially Latin America directly. When I arrived to Colombia on my first working place, I was talking to people in this way. Hi, can you please send me that presentation? Or, hey, how are you doing? What's the data on that report? And my questions just went into the void and were treated rather coldly. Guess why? Because I didn't adapt my style of communication to that country's rules. It's very useful and ordinary and, and uh, commonary to, to talk to people uh, in these southern countries and to use uh, dim the diminutive in words. For example, could you please help me if you have some time? Or uh, can you please do that for me if it doesn't bother you so much? And also, you have to sincerely talk to people, use the culture of small talks. You know, when you meet a person, talk about something that is not so relevant to your work, uh, ask how the person is doing, or even how the family of the person is doing. And especially in uh, Southern Europe, the favorite topic of communication is football. You can actually even ask how their, uh, their favorite team played it last match. And in Latin America, football is like a religion. We use, uh, we use this uh, fact in our business as well. For example, when preparing some, to watch some match in Europe or Latin America, we prepare special discounts and promotional activities for football goods and sporting goods at online stores. When the match is happening, I can talk about Spain and Colombia, people gather in front of the screens with big, by big families, big groups, friends, you know, even companies suspend work, go to conference rooms and gather behind the screen to watch their favorite, or especially if it's a national uh, team playing a game. Uh, for, the sake, for the sake of the game, of course. They also prepare a lot in advance to watch that game. They buy uniforms, they buy a lot of, uh, a lot of accessories, even dogs' clothes, you know, baby carriages, covers for cars, bicycles, everything. They just get mad about the game at, at that period of time. Unfortunately, international companies don't always take into account uh, habits and traditions of the markets where they launch products. Here is uh, an example from McDonald's. They launched their product in India, and uh, in the late 90s, they tried to sell their beef burgers. How do you think it affected their sales to sell the beef burgers in the country where majority of the population consider cows as sacred animals. Here is the example uh, from Coca-Cola's advertising in Saudi Arabia. So the marketers, in order to simplify the ad, presented the product uh, as a comic book. So reading from left to right, you can understand that a person gets tired, he drinks a Coke, and then he runs and gets very energetic, you know, you like it so much, so just drink, drink Coke. But they didn't take into account that in Arabic countries, people read from right to left. So you can probably also understand what happened there with the ad and maybe with the marketers as well. I don't know the story, the end of the story. From the successful examples, I really like the IKEA one and its advertising campaign on the 1st of July in Canada. So what's happening there is that a lot of uh, people stop their lease contracts on this day. Students go back from campuses to back big cities and there is a shortage of bags in the stores. So what IKEA did is that they installed the advertising walls with boxes that could be freely taken and used by just people on the streets. And this action was uh, actually, Canadians resp responded very warmly to this action because there is a shortage of boxes, so they could just use the, the boxes from the streets. 
Fortunately, there are more and more such examples uh, right now in the world, in business, in uh, companies, because people, because of, of course there is a lot of in information in internet and just the world is getting global, you know, you can find uh, other facts and read about traditions and habits, but also there is another reason that I truly believe in is that companies are getting more interested in other traditions and people are getting more interested in other traditions. Uh, we can say that right now, in 2019, we still work with people, you know, still not with robots, even in the digital sphere. So I, I think people should be more human and think about other people. People from different countries are very distinct and yet familiar. They have the same needs to be loved, to spend time with friends and families, to learn something new and of course to dance. <laughs>